going to do it's a quick view of the controls of the systems on the overhead panel uh, let's start from the flight control panels here we have the flight controls A and B normal flight controls rather are powered by system A and B if system A or B fail one system A or system B or both rather must be powered by the system standby putting this switch on standby rudder this is the alternate flap switch and you put an arm you can operate an alternate flap for 15 or 40 normal use for alternate flaps is flaps 15 and the leading edge when you put this switch down put here it's leading edge is go to full extended position your damper, the switch of your damper, the spoiler switch on your off, normal uses for maintenance purposes. Okay. You have the navigation switch to transfer the systems from one side to another side. Okay. And the displays for the DEUs and DUs. Okay. Here we have the panel from fuel. We have six pumps. We have three tanks in this aircraft, left main tank, right main tank, and central tanks. Okay. Normal usage, we are using the main tanks because you don't need too much fuel for the flight. Fuel pumps in the center has on and off position. On position, we just turn on when you have fuel more than five 500 kilograms and center tanks and uh, after pump and forward tank for the left tank for the left uh, tank you have position on and off if you have low fuel you have low pressure it's the same occurs when you put the switch to off okay. continue here, here we have the electrical system the battery switch now you can hear the battery conditions and the standby power we have 400 115 the voltage and the frequency battery it's 27 and the gully power switch off and on we have the electrical panel and standby power and here you can disconnect the IDG switch for generators you put on and off for the IDGs and for the APU generators okay. window heats switch for on and off windows one two three four and five and the probe probe heaters and an ice and wing and chives. Here we have the electrical panel. Okay, this aircraft has two hydraulic systems, system A and system B, that you can see here. System A has uh, one engine driven generator, one engine driven pump, and one electrical pump. The system B is the same, one engine driven pump and another electrical pump. System B normal powered the normal brakes and flaps and system A landing gear alternate brakes gear down and normal steering the primary flight controls are powered for both systems and uh, and that's it Okay, so uh, I'm going to give you a quick systems overview on the first officer's side. Those are the controls we operate during the flight. Captain Selm just told us about the other parts of the aircraft, the one that normally the captain is responsible, captain's areas of responsibility. You can start here by the air conditioning system. Here we have the cockpit controllers. This one you can com we control the supply duct. And here, the passenger cabin. As you can see, right now it's indicating 
four degrees centigrade Celsius. That's uh, normally when the flight attendants come and ask us to, to change the temperature. First of all, we take a look here, see what the temperature is indicating, and we can control it, whether automatic or manually. In the temperature controllers, the left side controls the temperature in the cockpit. We have the automatic controller, you can go here from full cold, full hot, and manually. Manually, we simply close or open the air mix valve. Same thing happens in the right side for the passenger cabin. Right here, we have our pressurization control panel. We have left, right packs, isolation valve, left bleed, right bleed, and here, the APU bleed air switch. This is the position it should be on the ground. Both packs in automatic, both bleeds, bleed air switches on, isolation valve open, and the APU bleed air open, so we can have air for engine start and for the passengers. Here we have our uh, cabin control panel. This is the altitude we are supposed to fly. We were cleared for flight level 370, which is pretty high, flying to Santos Dumont Airport. And this is our landing altitude. Santos Dumont landing altitude is 11 feet, so I keep it at zero here, so it can program the pressurization for during the descent. You have three uh, modes, uh, control modes here. One is an automatic, the normal mode of operation. In case you have any problem in the automatic mode, we switch it to alternate, and this green light here will go on. In case you have, uh, you also have a problem in the automatic mode, you can switch it to manual. Here, you are able to to control the valve. You can go from fluke the outflow valve. You can go from full closed to full open. Here on the ground, it's going to be always full open. So now I turn it back to automatic, which is the normal mode of operation. And here I have uh, the cabin uh, pressurization control panel. The inner scale indicates the cabin altitude. As you can see here in Campinas, fuel elevation is 2,100 feet. That is the same indication we should have here in its inner scale. The outer scale is the cabin differential pressure. If in any case during our, our leveled flight we have a uh, rapid decompression, the cabin altitude we switch to the altitude we'll be flying. Like if we are in flight level 370, the cabin altitude selector will go to 370 and the differential pressure will go to zero because we will be at the same pressure at our altitude. And uh, the max differential pressure to hold is 9.1 psi. This outer gauge here is the uh, cabin uh, rate of climb selector. Normally, in automatic mode, it will operate at a rate of 350 feet per minute. And uh, that's pretty much about it in our side. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed.